Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a very interesting equation. Now what makes this equation very interesting is the fact that we have a a on the right hand side as opposed to a constant. a is a given number and we can just change the value of a and for every different value of a we're going to get a different solution. Okay, how many solutions do we get? We'll find out. But initially this problem was simpler. So it was something like this, x to the power ln x over x is equal to 1. Let's go ahead and solve this first, and then I'll do some stuff, and I'll show you. And by the way, this is called an equation with a parameter or a parametric equation, because a is a parameter. It's a given number. As you change a, you get a different solution. In other words, we do get a family of solutions, depending on the value of a. But let's go ahead and solve the simpler case, because that's a problem-solving strategy you sometimes solve a simpler problem to understand what's happening behind the scenes, okay? So let's go, I know at this point you're probably thinking, hey, x is supposed to be a one, right? I mean, because one to any power is one, but is that gonna make it undefined? You have to be careful because if ln x is in the denominator, then ln one is zero. You have to make sure you don't make it undefined. But let's go ahead and see what happens if we natural log both sides, okay? So we're going to go ahead and ln this and ln that. And as you know, ln 1 is 0, and this is a power, so we can kind of move it to the front. ln x over x times ln x equals ln 1, which is 0. ln x's are multiplied, and that gives us ln x squared divided by x equals 0. And from here, you only get one solution. The denominator should not be 0. ln x should be 0, and that implies that x equal, is equal to 1. Well, we only got one solution, it's, even though it's repeated, x equals 1. That's it? All right, let's go ahead and do some calculus, shall we? So let's go ahead and define f of x as x to the power ln x over x. And then I'm going to go ahead and differentiate it. And remember, the other video that I made today, go ahead and check it out, because it kind of uses a somewhat similar idea, even though... Well, it just uses ln x anyways. It's just x ln x. Anyways, so let's go ahead and differentiate this function. But before that, I want to write it as follows. Remember, any number y can be written as e to the power ln y. So suppose this whole thing is y. We can write it as e to the power ln x to the power. Oops, I should probably write it a little lower. Like ln x to the power ln x over x. And of course, this is a power. We can go ahead and move it to the front just like before. It just becomes e to the power ln x squared divided by x. Does that look familiar? Yes, because we just used it for x equals 1, right? Or a equals 1, sorry. The right hand side was a. Now, this is our function f of x. Let's go ahead and differentiate it. Remember, e to the power some function, it's going to be e to the power u, that function times the derivative of the inside from chain rule, which is the derivative of the exponent. And that's the quotient rule. So if you just differentiate it, you're going to get something like this. The derivative of ln x squared. It's 2 times ln x times the derivative of the inside of the inside, which is ln x, which is 1 over x, times the first function, minus the derivative of x, which is 1, times the second function. Don't forget the second power. And all of that is divided by x squared. Awesome. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit. This can't be zero, so don't worry about it. But I want to set this derivative equal to zero. That gives me the numerator, which is 2 ln x minus ln x quantity squared equals zero. Of course, x should not be zero, and x can never be zero. So now we get the following if we factor out ln x, 2 minus ln x equals zero. And from here, we get two solutions. Nice. Ln x equals 0 or ln x equals 2. The first one implies x equals 1. Second one implies x equals e to the second power, right? If you just anti-log or e to the power both sides. Cool, cool. What is that supposed to mean? There are two values that are two critical points. Let's make a table. I know some people like the second derivative test. I don't like it because I think the table is better. More intuitive and it's kind of easy to understand, sort of, right? Maybe. Okay, the critical points are 1 and e squared. Obviously, e squared is bigger, so we're going to put it here. And remember, x needs to be greater than 0. So I'm going to put my domain, I think in one of the videos, I forgot to restrict it. Because of ln x, it's supposed to be that way. And of course, x can't be 0. So 0 is excluded. And then these are our critical points. 
Great, now let's go ahead and place the signs, like plus minus signs. How can we determine whether the derivative is positive or negative? If you look at the derivative, you have this in the numerator, right? So when is that going to be positive or negative? Well, if you just plug in some numbers, like maybe pick a number greater than e squared, how about e cubed? You can plug it in, right? And then you're going to get a minus sign, and then plus sign, and then a minus sign, which means our function is going to decrease, and then increase, and then decrease, which means we have a minimum here and a maximum here. Uh-oh, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Now let's go ahead and replace x with 1. So f of 1 is just going to be 1 because 1 to the power anything. Remember that? So we have a min at 1, 1. And then if you replace x with e squared, remember e squared was another critical point. We're going to get e to the power 2 to the power 2 over e squared. And that's e to the power 4 over e squared. So in other words, we have a maximum at e squared comma e to the power 4 over e squared. Such a weird number, right? And notice that e squared is greater than 4, so it's going to be e to the power some number less than 1, which is kind of like the root of e, which is less than e. Okay, something like that. A lot of complications, right? So what do we do with this information, though? So we're going to go ahead and take a look at the graph because the graph is going to give us a lot of good information. And obviously, without the graph, it's kind of hard to visualize. I noticed, so I want to show you the graph. But to keep these in mind, we have the critical points. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the graph. Actually, we're going to look at two graphs because, first of all, this is from Wolfram Alpha, which is kind of brief and nice. And it kind of does the appropriate scaling. Uh, one thing that I like about it and one thing that I don't like about Desmos, it's kind of hard to... Um, what's it called? Zoom out sometimes. You have to zoom out like crazy, but Desmos, um, well, Wolfram Alpha actually takes care of it by doing the scaling a little differently, as you can see here. Anyways, so here's the graph from Desmos. We're still going to use it, so it's good. Now, notice that we have two points. This is at x equals 1, and this is at x equals e squared. As you know, e squared is less than 8. It's 7 point something. I don't know, 7.3 maybe. So, as you know, our function is increasing, decreasing, making this maximum and minimum point. And of course, as x approaches infinity, our uh, y values are going to approach 1. So, basically, somewhere in the middle, you're going to have a vertical asymptote, right? But that doesn't matter, because at that point, we also have a horizontal tangent. We actually have horizontal tangent at two points, which means the following. If a is less than 1, there are no solutions because y equals a is a horizontal line. As you can see here, y equals 1 half is shown as a sample. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't intersect the graph. So a less than 1, no solution. If a is equal to 1, you're going to get a tangent line. You're going to have one solution. What is that solution? We'll talk about that next, okay? If a is between 1 and e to the power 4 over e squared, which is where you get the other tangent right here, somewhere below 2, uh, you're going to get something like what? One solution again, right? Well, actually two solutions because it's actually going to, on that interval, you're going to get two intersection points. If a is equal to e to the power 4 over e squared, that's when you get one solution. And then if a is greater than that, Sorry for the mess. I just wanted to put it on the graph, but we, we don't have a lot of room. You're going to get no solution. So you can kind of put these no solutions together and write them together. You can put the one solutions together and write them together if you want. And two solution will be a separate case or branch. But how do you find the solutions, right? That's the million dollar question. Uh-oh, looks like we don't have any room. Yes, we do. We can actually go ahead and do it right here. Okay, I don't want to go to the white pages because that's going to be too bright. So let's go ahead and stick with the dark background. I know a lot of people like it. Sometimes they people, I think, watch these videos when it's dark. Hopefully, I don't want to make it too bright for you guys. Anyways, so let's see how we can solve this problem in general. We have x to the power ln x over x equals a. And we're going to ln both sides. And when we do, we're going to get this to the front. And it's same story, ln x squared divided by x is going to be ln a. It's a little different here because what we need to do next is square root both sides. I'm going to avoid some of the complications from absolute value. And just write this as ln x over the square root of x equals square root of something. And then I'm going to go ahead and write this as 
x to the power negative 1 half times ln x equals square root of ln a. And then I need a negative 1 half for the ln. So let's multiply both sides by negative 1 half and times negative 1 half. This can be put up as a power, which gives us ln x to the power negative 1 half times x to the power negative 1 half can be written as e to the power ln x to the power negative 1 half. And then once you apply Lambert's W function, you can now get the solutions. Of course, it's going to be uh, still some work, but at least you have a formula. And this brings us to the end of this video. For thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.